I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another episode of Out of the Trenches, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and I answer your questions about the First World War. Hugh Genos writes, Very important question. Remember the question you got back in 2014, should the French have retreated at Verdun? I'm not going to answer this question for another two years. I am sorry, Hugh Ryan, but you're going to have to wait. You said you'd give your opinion in 2016, and now's the time for opinion sharing. Okay, well, um, well, with 100 years hindsight and perfect 2020 hindsight, my answer is yes, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a little qualifying. Um, if I was the French at Verdun as it was breaking out, and I knew because it was uh, over a week before the French brought in a lot of airplanes, so Germany had complete air superiority. They had 168 planes at the beginning, five times the number of French planes. They also had Zeppelins nearby. The French had only one supply road, and they didn't have a big rail network going into Verdun, only one supply road, that all of their, all of their equipment, all of their new personnel, everything was brought on by thousands of trucks. If I was the French, I would have thought, gee, the Germans are going to bomb and destroy that road, and then we won't be able to be resupplied. Now, the Germans did not do that, which, in my opinion, is one of the biggest mistakes Germany made during the war. And there's no real explanation for why they didn't. They, they've only given unsatisfactory things, saying, well, we didn't really know what, you know, the Air Force was going to do at Verdun. But, Knowing that now, yeah, I would have retreated. It's also a big salient, and if you could make a tighter line by retreating, which is what they considered. But uh, funny that you never read that, that Joffrey considered that the Germans were going to bomb the supply lines, because had they done that, the battle would have been very different. So my answer is yes, but the reason never materialized. Okay. Uh, from Facebook, Antoine Lavin writes, I wonder if he's related to Avril, uh, writes, Hi. Could you speak about the story of Colonel Driant? He was both deputy and officer during the war. In France, his men and he are considered heroes for the defense of the Bois de Cahors at the beginning of the Battle of Verdun. Thanks for the videos. Um, Emile Driant was a captain in the French army, but he was also famous as a writer of military fiction, and he took part in creating the Croix de Guerre. He was an experienced field officer, who openly criticized Joffre for pulling men and artillery out of the fortresses at Verdun in the months before the actual Battle of Verdun. Drian's feelings, and uh, he felt that this might leave the area vulnerable for a German attack, and he proved himself more than correct. Um, as the battle began, the first shells burst around Bois de Caur where Briand and two French battalions were stationed. Um, the woods were not really defensible, and the little trenches flooded really easily. Um, the German bombardment took a heavy, heavy toll on the defenders, as you know, and as the German infantry struck, three frontline companies were instantly overrun, but Drian's men fought off the attackers with guns, hand grenades, and even just stones. After 16 hours of combat, there were only 80 men left around Drian as he gave the order to retreat, knowing that there was no chance of surviving another attack. And as he turned to leave the trenches, several bullets hit him, fatally, and with his last words, Oh la, mon dieu, Drian died. Kooky Fox on Reddit writes, Greetings to India and the whole team. My great-grandfather served in the French army during World War I as an artillery officer. I know he was a hero of Verdun, I was told that he kept on firing his battery, despite it being buried a dozen times. Wow. And was for such decorated on several occasions. My father told me that the war really drove him mad, and that on regular occasions, every week usually, he'd throw out all his medals by the window, hmm, shouting at the top of his lungs. My family would always pick them up and bring them back whenever he calmed down. My father, having picked them up on countless occasions, clearly remembers that the old man had a Russian medal. The medals have been lost to time, and my father never looked up what the medal was back when they were still around. So I'm wondering, were there many cases of soldiers being awarded foreign medals? Okay, especially a Russian medal for a French soldier. It just seems odd. You know, sadly enough, a great many, many thousands upon thousands of soldiers shared the mental scars 
your grandfather had, and the terror that they had to endure. Um, long after the war was over, men were haunted by the images and experiences of their past and indeed for the rest of their lives. Foreign medals were in fact common when companies of different nationalities fought side by side, or if a nation would send their troops on foreign soil to fight for their allies. For example, a lot of American or English soldiers were awarded French or Belgian medals for service. The most frequent foreign decorations for service for soldiers of the Entente were the Medaille Militaire, the Croix de Guerre, the British Military Cross, or the Distinguished Conduct Medal, or even the Italian War Merit Cross. Um, that was often only an honorable mention in which the nation officially thanked the foreign soldiers for their military actions, either individually but more likely in whole companies or regiments. But soldiers often were not allowed to officially wear those medals. Some national constitutions even forbade wearing foreign medals on the uniforms. Um, later they would call them authorized foreign decorations. Your grandfather most likely served close to the Russian Expeditionary Force, which consisted of only three battalions and served mostly around the Ein sector or Corsi. Uh, so if you want to retrace your grandfather's steps, you might, you might want to look there, although I can't guarantee anything obviously, because without a description or a picture of the medal, it's hard to say what decoration it was. I mean, it could be the St. Anne's Medal for Soldiers, which was more often given to foreign troops for their valor in the field by Imperial Russia than other medals. If you'd like to see our regular episode about how the Battle of Verdun actually began, you can click right here for that. Now do not forget to like us on Facebook and to follow us on Twitter. See you next time.